founder of Smoking for Jesus Ministry. We want to encourage you with the Word of God that you would always be ready because we are in crucial times because I believe the Lord is coming. So stay in your Word. Stay on your knees. Stay being a light. Stay being a witness for Christ. In the name of Jesus, enjoy yourself. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. I've seen many troubles, but you always see me through. I've seen many troubles since I've been saved since I'm 24 years old. I done seen all kinds of stuff. But he always get me through. There ain't nothing too hard for him. Nothing. Come on, y'all good? Y'all take your places. Come on. Let's have a little good time today. Let's have a good time today. We are free. We free. I ain't worried about your little problems and the little stuff you got. That ain't nothing anyway. God could end that tonight. This evening, your life could end. He could end that right quick for you. Don't worry about it. He's trying to get you holy before you go. He's trying to get you saved before you go. Because there's some problems still going on in us. You know, we've been moving on in this ministry quite some time. I, I think I welcome my, my visitors already. If anybody the first time, amen. Appreciate you for coming. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is the house of the Lord. You're welcome. You're welcome. Welcome. The Bible is the sword of the Spirit. If you don't believe what the words say, you got your own opinion. You still smoking weed. You heard what I said. You got your, you still drinking alcohol. That's how I'm going to start this at this moment. You don't believe what the Bible says. You have no roadmap to heaven. Your feelings, your emotions will always lead you a contrary to that. Now, you have to understand that because when you get saved, the key to the healing that you're going to need from all them emotional wounds, but they were talking about the trauma, things that you've experienced, you're going to have to come clean with him because you know everything. So, but if you can start lying that I am, and, and, you, and the first lie you tell yourself is, I know myself. That's the first lie you could ever be, that I know me. Now, the Bible says, my heart is wicked and deceitful. Who could know it? So you wrote him off already with your opinion. The girl got quiet already. You already wrote him off because you know more than him now. You know yourself. I want to go, I want, I'm going to quote scriptures and I want to put them up, see. That's how I want to move. All right? Okay. Uh, your heart is wicked and deceitful out of Isaiah, right? Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah, Jeremiah says, 17 says, your heart is wicked and deceitful. Who could know it? You don't even know your heart. Because I used to, all the more drinking boys and smoking and dope, I know my heart is good. You lying. Yeah, that's why they said, I got a good heart. Who told you that? Where you get that from, you got a good heart. You are tripping again. God said, you don't know your heart. Because your heart think you, you think you know your heart. So you're going to sit around, pious, like you got an angel on your, on your head, like you got it all together. you lying. I'm lying. Trials, testing, tribulation, trouble, usually find out what's in your heart. When people don't agree with you, your opinion stuff, find out what's in your heart. Because you can cut people off for a quick, I, I have another opinion. What that, that's you. 
I got one too. What's the problem? The Lord says in the word that all that's going to be revealed in the last hour when you stand before him. So he going to tell you what was right and what was wrong then. Because some of that stuff you think wrong and right is not. Now, for instance, let I get away. For instance, we could say a lot of stuff is wrong the way God do stuff. The keys to be able, the first thing, have, you have to sell her in your feelings, in your guilt, your shame. Huh? Because somehow you have disappointed God. You just ain't went to the depot where you disappointed him when he was trying to get you healed, try to get you to understand how life really go, but you already had an opinion about it. So he has to run a course. Perhaps he gets you to understand that you not got. You don't know what you think you know. Because you got your heart have to be purified. That takes a lifetime a lot of times. All depend how much you've been damaged from the original state you should have been in. We are damaged goods. You see, you should have had certain things done to you when you were younger and because it wasn't or because it was misused defiled, abuse. So you come out different now because that's what you. Mm -hmm. Because you really needed somebody to introduce you to what real love was about. Not because they were perfect, but they were always pointing to the one that really loves, really understand love completely. I'm talking about the Savior and his Father that plan he had set up to really display what love was about. So now we got, I'm doing this talking first, we got all this stuff about and, uh, these mental illness that people have, the trauma that they have. Because you have been damaged goods. Y'all got that? So now I have to find out where this train went off the track then here in my life, and most of us is when we first were born. But God said, okay, I got that covered because I knew you when you was in your mother's womb. He said, I got that covered for you. I know you already been known. Now, you got to believe now. If you're still tripping and you believe God like us, then you're not going to understand God. God know everything. Uh, I'm going to say President Trump understood that the other day. That sharpshooter was right on time, boy. That's too close for comfort. That's too close. Most of y'all like, you don't watch nothing, but I hope you understand what's going on around you all the time. That was too close for comfort. A millimeter, Brother Gavin? All you had to do is turn that, and you out. Because he was shooting for the head. Head shot. Huh? Something happened there. Some people figure out where to get to heaven. They'll find out what happened. But God run everything, see? He control everything. But that's too close, brother. You saw what I did? That's too close there. Woo! Man, man, man. But, but anyway, if you don't believe he control everything, just keep fooling with it. He's going to show you he got everything under his control all the time. He don't sleep nor slumber. So you ain't going to catch him napping. If he'd been napping right there, he had you. Oh, man, praise God. That's just something he want to show itself all the time. Where people that would even just pay attention to how God operates. God operate powerful. Huh? Powerful. I'm trying to see where I want to start out. All right. 
got so much to say and the time runs out on you. Now, everybody that I notice in Scripture, Job come up with this telling God about being born. Huh? But Job wasn't the only one that said that. You know, one of the greatest men that God used said that, Jeremiah. So Jeremiah got to a point where he thought, and all he did well, you know about it, right? But he come to a place, and the way God was dealing to get him to be this mighty man of God, accomplish what he need, he said the same thing Job said. Y'all looking at me like, I better go to that scripture then, huh? I better read it. Yes, ma'am. I better read it because the way they're looking at me like, Pastor, what you talking about now? Huh? Because Jeremiah, uh, yeah, let's see what he said first. He got it right first, but after the pressure came, he changed. Jeremiah 1 verse 5, he said, before I was formed, be I'll let you read. Go ahead. Before I formed thee, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. That's what God says about him. That's how I'm familiar with Job. I went through Job, which is when God offered uh, Job to the devil. Huh? Because God said by Job, he said, man, that's my man. He, he, have you tried him? No. Nah. You remember well, let's refresh your memory. Job 10, verse 18. Huh? Job 10, verse 18. He, he questioned God. See? Now, on this journey, if you're going to do anything for God, you're going to come to question God if this right or this going the wrong way. See? You, you see, because that's if you want to do what he wants. Now, if you got it all mapped out and all planned for yourself, you ain't never going to say nothing like that. Because you already got your plan worked out. Sign. Huh? What? What do you say? Wherefore then hast thou brought me forth out of the womb? Uh -huh. Oh, that I had given up the ghost, and no eye had seen me. What? Easy, Bible. Y'all don't understand what he's saying. I should have born, still born. Come on. Why did you let me be born? I should have died before anyone saw me. Woo! Now, most of y'all familiar with Job 3, verse 3, because he didn't stop talking crazy in 10, you understand? <laughs> He's talking crazy. Because God said, I know what's going on. I knew you for you were forming your mother's womb. Boy, you bad, Jack. I already know that you were going to come pass. Now, this is, should build confidence in you, who you're supposed to be trusted. What? He don't take no breaks. He got everything under control. Now, the only reason you, because you don't feel that way. Because you and your feelings. We're not talking feelings, child. We're talking supernatural power now. That done? All right. You see the one in Job 3.3. 3. Y'all got it up already. Don't need, come on, got to go. They, they, I think they can reach. Amen. Y'all see that? See what he's doing. Now watch. Now, I said, Jeremiah, we read chapter 1, verse 5, right? Yes, sir. We did that already. Jeremiah 20, verse 14, through verse 18, but I'm not going to read all of it. I'm just giving it. Okay. Jeremiah, what I told you? Jeremiah right? 20, verse 14. Okay, but yes. All right. I, I got ahead of myself. Go back. Jeremiah 1, verse 18 through and 19. I want to just slow it down a little bit. Because when y'all quiet, y'all must be listening. But true? <laughs> Go ahead. Come on. For behold, I have made thee 
a defense city and an iron pillar uh -huh. and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against mm. the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. Uh -huh. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee, saith the now, Lord. No, wait, wait, wait. I, I went there because he said, some of y'all don't think you're going to have no fight. He said, they don't fight against you. So welcome. You're going to be a fight. But he says, I'm going to do what? Huh? For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. Uh-huh. They will fight against you, but thy shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, declare the Lord, to deliver you. So why are you so sad? You don't know they're going to fight you. Demons from hell are going to fight you. Yes, they're going to fight you. But, but your confidence is not what you do right or what you do wrong. I am with you. Uh-huh. Okay. So now, God trying to encourage Jeremiah. Huh? Now I'm going back to 20. Uh, that's what I told you, right? Right, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 20, verse 14. Verse 14, huh? Cursed be the day wherein I was born. Oh, no, Jeremiah. You see? There you go. Talking about the first day I was born. Another mighty man of God that God chose. All right? You know that you never know, seen that before. Watch. Go ahead. Come on. Let not the day wherein my mother bear me be blessed. Cursed be the man who brought tidings to my father, saying, A man child is born unto thee, making him very glad. And let that man be as the cities which the Lord overthrew and repented not. Let him hear the cry in the morning and the shouting at noontide, because he slew me not from the wound, or that my mother might have been made been my grave and her womb to be always. Oh no, Jeremiah! That's the same man, brother. But God bringing him through, bringing him through his will now, his process now, huh? And you get a little tougher now. See, so you go. Now, you know about, but some people quit right there completely. He confessed it. Some will act like that don't happen to you. Now, here's a man, both of those, uh, didn't have the Holy Spirit like you're supposed to have. The comforter. The counselor. Huh? I'm talking New Testament. I moved from Old Testament to the New Testament. But because you don't realize or understand that, that the soul man still going to fight. Paul tried to explain it. He said, there's a fight going on between the soul man and the spirit man here. Now, it all depends how much you going to meditate on what God has said or meditate on what you say, how you feel. Because huh? it's going to be a good fight here. That's if you're going to grow to be able to move into the things of God that you want to move into, but you can't move in and carry that baggage. Because you're going to get right where God trying to bless, and when the test come, you're not going to do like Paul and Silas did. Trying to put it together for you. See, see what they did. Huh? Finish reading that, Elder. If I move, just a little further. Go ahead. Or that my mother might have been my grave, and her womb to be always great. So I should have died in my mother's womb to come to have to go through this. And what you got me going through, Lord, because they put him in a pit, and they cursed him and put him down and didn't want to believe him. And you had all them smart alecks that wasn't hearing nothing from God because they wasn't called to the task that Jeremiah was called to. So there's a serious fight going on all the time. But these people, if I can say it that way, made history in God's book. Well, look at their life then. What you think you are, who you think you are. Oh, you're going to call your own shots, but that's for Jeremiah. <laughs> you know what's for you. If you're going to do God's will, 
Now, my, my wife mentioned it. Are you going to stand before him? And he's going to say, I don't know you. Work of iniquity. Because you did more damage in the way you handled my people, how you responded to them, because they didn't agree with you, and you had a different opinion, and your feelings, your emotions kept you from fulfilling. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and then yourself, you know, the other people. Got love other people, too. Now, them people, normally going to be people get on your nerve. But you got to have the love of God for them. That's the idea. Oh, I, I, I'm going to pick mine. Uh huh. Do you still think you run something? You still controlling God? No man, no woman. Those brothers found out that wait a while. Job complaint was I ain't did nothing. I did right. Jeremiah said, "Man, I should have died in my mother's womb here with this." Verse eighteen. Yes, sir. Wherefore came I forth out of the womb to see labor and sorrow that my days should be consumed with shame. Oh, easy Bible. You don't understand what this man talking about. You don't, you don't get it. You don't get away. God, God, Jeremiah had to be an example of being able to trust God. And I'll move down a minute. because I, I said, Lord, I want to try to keep it. There's so much. But where you can understand that it has to do with you being healed inside, that you're not borrowing from your past, your rejected life, your sorrow, like your different trauma. Uh -huh. You're borrowing from that now. You're not borrowing from how God is child. You're borrowing from it still. So that means, that's why Paul tried to explain I have to die daily to this. Because the natural man is going to be applauding you right. Uh, you get started talking about, I don't do certain things. Well, who on your life then? You go to Sandy Bowl, like, I don't do it. I don't, what? You better hurry and change that tune before you get before God. Because it's supposed to be his life. Have you really surrendered yourself to the cross? There's a crucifixion part. Have you really surrendered yourself to say, Lord, whatever you want with me, however you want to do it with me, Lord, just help me, Lord, to follow the leading of your spirit, Lord. Not my leading, not how I feel, not how I think, but what you want. Now, these men, they're just honest. They, you just don't want to be honest. Tell God he shouldn't have born you. Because this is what I born you for. Out of your mother's wound, this is the way I want your life to go. Where you could be, now, I ain't talking about going to no gross sin. I ain't talking about doing something to help, help them understand it. So what I'm saying now, I'm talking about his will. Because it was his will that those people was going to reject him because he had to give them the right message. <laughs> Say ain't going to work, brother. Now, now watch. <clears throat> that was the last verse I did with Jeremiah, right? Yes, sir. I don't want I'm trying to just stay, stay cool. Stay. Now, Said out, say what? Easy Bible. Go ahead, read easy. I would like to curse the day that I was born. Uh -huh. That day was not a happy day. The day that my mother gave birth to me, that day a man told my Your father. Your mama ought to slap you. <laughs> right now. Hey, you going far, boy? Oh, man. Come on, go ahead. That day a man told my father, good news, you have a son. I would like to curse that man, too. Oh, Jeremiah, now you're going back. You curse it now. Now, now do you understand? Look, y'all need to read what Jeremiah had to went through. I, I can't get it all. 
how God allowed these people to do certain things to him as he tried to minister the truth to him. This is what it does about it. Lies after lies after lies come. But nobody ever go back and say, well, wow. I, I've heard more lies. I hear very few compliments about when they didn't know what was, which way was up. Don't hear nothing about that. It just stuck. And here Jeremiah was stuck in his self. He was hurting for his self. That's why you got to die to yourself. Or you're not going to finish because they're going to beat your brains out with this one. Because he know that's the way God operates. Because God allows certain things because you have to be tested. Your heart. Do I trust God just because things are going the way I think? See, you have to, you have to, be, you have to be tried by fire. Huh? Huh? That's Jeremiah what? That's Jeremiah 20. We had verse 16 in the Easy Bible. It's too much of this. Jeremiah 15, verse 10. Now, it's all over the place there. I, I never was looking for it like that. I read it, but I wasn't looking for it. But if you ain't looking for certain things, you ain't going to pay no attention to that. 15, verse 10. Woe is me, my mother, that thou hast borne me a man of strife and a man of contention to the whole earth. Uh -huh. I have neither lent nor usury, nor men have lent to me on usury, yet every one of them doeth curse me. He's a Bible. Let's see what he's saying. This is terrible for me. I am sorry, mother, that you gave birth to me. I cause <coughs> trouble and anguish wherever I go in the land. Uh -huh. I never lend money to people, and I do not ask them to lend money to me, but everyone curses me anyway. So I, said, I, I ain't trying to cook nobody. I did none of that. But they still curse me anyway. Wow. Now, so you, most Christians will start cursing back. Uh-huh. Because I ain't did nothing. That's what you would say in the natural. Huh? I got to stop this, Lord. Uh, but you're supposed to be in the mood of the Lord is my helper. I'll come back to that. The Lord is my helper, see? Because he wants you to get to a place where you're not afraid of what people say. They can even kill the body, Jesus said, but they can't kill your soul. Rather fear God who can destroy soul and body in hell. See, so you're really not dead yet in your thinking. Because their response showed that they were still holding on to what they seen. Huh? Now, I'll come back and maybe get David. I got too much here, so I don't want to stress you out. All right, the praise is supposed to be to God all the time. Now, 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 Paul and Silas was an example of in Acts sixteen verse twenty-five. Paul and Silas wasn't complaining after God had led them to that city, and God knowing all things that they were going to be put in jail. Come on, Christian. You don't walk. Not, you had no car. You don't walk all the way to this city. And then when you get there, God let them people not welcome you open arms. They welcome you to open prison doors to put you in jail. And I ain't got time to read it all, but you need to read your Bible. They believe that God had led them there. <laughs> So when they get there, they put him in prison. Now, read it. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang. No, prayed. no, no, you went too far. Uh-uh, you got to go back when they first put him in the prison anyway. Because they threw him in the prison when they hit the city. Huh? Now, I want the ending of it. Because that makes people think they, they were, everything was all right. Wasn't all right? They land up in the prison. 
And God done told them to go because they're supposed to be going to do some evangelist work or something in there. And then now when they get there, come on, you ready? Come on. Verse 16. Uh -huh. And it came to pass as he went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought our masters much gain by soothsaying. Okay. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men, the servants of the Most High God, would show us we have salvation. Drop down to oh. verse. Come on, brother. What you doing to me? Come on. Right before they put him in prison. All right. And Paul being grieved, verse 18, Paul no. being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the self same hour. And when a master saw that the hope of their gains were gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. Okay, now they, they're preaching. And this lady, uh, full of the devil. Witchcraft. They fool around, move in the spirit, huh? But the man who making money off that ain't like that. He said, "Call that devil back in her." <laughs> you see that? Now you go that devil, you go cast some devils out there. Huh? We got something for you. That's how Paul them get into the jail. I said, "That is that right?" Yes, sir. Okay, come on. Verse 23, uh -huh. and when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison. Not just putting them in prison, they beat them. So when they beat them, they could have said, we sorry, mister, and come back, devil. Because keep in mind, God summoned them to go to evangelize. Aha. But you didn't know that come with being an evangelist, too. Now take that shirt off. Watch out. Come on. Go ahead. Charging the jailer to keep them safely, uh -huh. who have received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight. Okay, well, easy, Bible, because you'll kill my time now. Come on. Go ahead. The soldiers hit Paul and Silas many times. Uh -huh. They took hold of them and they pushed them into the prison. Mm -hmm. The officer said to the prison guard, Lock the prison door carefully so that these men cannot get free. The prison guard did what he had been told to do. Uh -huh. He put Paul and Silas in a room in the middle of the prison. He put their feet between big, heavy pieces of okay, wood. Okay, y'all got it. They shot them down. Y'all got that? Okay. Now, that's what you get for God talking about being an evangelist. You got it? But they didn't know that. They thought it was going to be whoop whoop a ray time. Even when things fall apart, will you still be able to thank him? Now, they proved it, if you keep reading. At midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. They were also singing. Uh, uh, most would have been too mad to pray. They'd have been trying to sleep and complaining in their dreams about why we are here. This, or if they wasn't sleeping, they'd have been complaining at midnight to God. But they was what? They were also singing songs to praise God. Oh, they can't get some of y'all to sing songs right now. And they got air here. lights in here, and you still refuse to raise your hands because you're mad because you had to work last night or something, and you're tired. You talk about I'm tired, so I'm not going to even praise God. Now, I'm doing that because, see, you can see what was in these brothers' hearts. When they heart, they, see, that's how you can check the heart out. I'm doing a shortcut because there's a lot of stuff to tell when a person just talking, but it's not in their heart. God tests to see what's in your heart. What things fall apart, this lesson talks about. When it falls apart, let's see who you serving now. Huh? Who you serving now? Are you serving the Lord or it's yourself? Let me see. I want to hurry this. Now, Jesus said, bless when people and things going good. Matthew 5, verse 11. Now, see, you got your own opinion, so this do you no good because most people turn off the word. So when you give them the word, that's why they, they, go start talking, they don't say nothing. Because they already got their mind made up to the way they feel or the way they think. So actually, 
That's going to lead me to strongholds that's in your mind. You got your opinion, the way you feel, the way you think, override what God's word say. That's a stronghold. Now, there are many of them. Uh, and I won't have time because I want to get this through. But there are many people, you can tell the way they talk. They got strongholds already. Their belief system is already. So they, they can't even hear what we say. But I'm doing it just for few that might could get free. Because you got strongholds. You got blockage. Matthew 5, verse 11, Jesus said, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Easy Bible, please. Yes, happy are you when people say bad things against you. You crazy. In the flesh, you crazy. But you crazy in the flesh. You not in the spirit. The spirit ram said, what? Read it again. Happy are you when people say bad things against you because you believe in me, or they may hurt you, or they may say things about you that are not true. Now, See, the problem with this Bible and talking about serving Jesus, you crazy. I'm crazy if I'm not going to believe what he said. Because all you're going to do is stand for it. You're going to say, did I say that? I kept a book over 6,000 years, huh? 2,000 New Testament, and you still telling me that was wrong, what I said. Because you never was really delivered from your kind of way of reasoning, your mindset, you never was delivered. So you, you talking about deliverance, you still be in bondage because the way you think. So you're not becoming a little child and believing what the Father says that's better for you in the way to believe. You still believe in yourself. Now, this is stupidity to walk the whole journey of life and get there, and then he's going to tell you what he just said. And he said, now, what's your problem with you don't believe what I said? Because you know better than me. you more spiritual than I am. You're more smarter than me. This don't make sense. Like they used to say in the old church, you can tear up your uh, membership. <laughs> you just waste the time. This is stupidity. Because I could go on and on and on with that same thought. How many times he say that to help you to understand? No, no, no. You don't understand eternal life. Now, if you can grab yourself by your neck and say, we are going to believe this. I know that don't sound right. I'm not in agreement with it. I don't really believe that, but I'm going to believe that because you said it. So help me, Lord, to trust that you knew me before I was born. So I surrender all. I surrender, see, to that. And it, it don't, it, no, it don't, don't expect it to make sense in the natural. Because it don't. That don't make sense in the natural. They praise during the tough times. Their heart didn't resist who God was. Not what he was doing right then, but who he is. See, because you start putting him down now that he don't know what he's doing. Smart boy. Because you're smarter than him now. So the childlike faith that scripture talks about, you trust in him. Okay, Lord, you know what I was born for. You know what I'm supposed to be doing. What it takes for me to be equipped. Because I am a vessel. That's a not, I'm a vessel that you should flow through me. It's not because of what I've done, what I've said. If not, I am sentenced then if I do that. I got to know I just need a worthy vessel that you will allow him to flow through you. But if you trap it right there, stand right there, 
If you trap it right there with your own opinion, the Bible tells you not to lean to your own understanding, but you lean back to your understanding. Now, now, old Christians do that. Young Christians have the memory, because it just happened a year or so, of who they used to be before they came to the Lord. But older Christians, after they ain't drank for 10, 20 years, drift right back. They don't have that appreciation, that love for what he brought you from. You forget that. Well, you say you don't, but that's where you're at. So you don't love God like that. You don't remember you couldn't do without it. I still remember I couldn't do without it. Every New Year's, I said I was going to quit, but January 1... That night, I'm back. I made the revelation. Y'all ought to stop this foolishness. Because I can remember saying, no, I'm not going to do that no more. I'm not going to go to that place no more. Every time my car turned that way. We had a self-driving car. Car drove itself. Because I'm looking in the car going, I... See that? But you don't want to tell the truth. See, you act like you are Iron Man Joe. Now, nah. I got it. Boy, you ain't about nothing without the leading of the Holy Spirit. Me neither. So stop acting like that. Got that? Now, nah. I'm trying to shortcut this. I'll get some more of that next time. Okay. Then, then you place your value on what he's done, and I, I think everybody needs a hall of shame, hall of fame, hall of shame, to go back to look at the way I used to think, the way I used to feel about things, if you have one, and then come to him like that all the time, all the time, because it's by his grace. It's not by what you can do or what you can say or how you do it. It's by his grace. And you have to remember that. Now, let's go to the journey then because he's trying to get you to be a greater light. He wants you more salty for him, more excited about what God has done for you. So you're supposed to be more excited. You don't be going to be a, a, a wearing a banner of 60 years. What? You're supposed to be able to show that. But the joy you have, the peace you have, no matter what. Most people fight in the battle to protect themselves. That's what they fight. For help, for me. Keep me. So I'm going to stay away from you because you're not going to be the right person. You know what? You're supposed to have so much of the Holy Ghost in you that people don't want to be around you. If they ain't going to do you no good, they ain't going to be around you. That's what it's supposed to be. You're supposed to be a light. That light blind them. No, you ain't got no amen. you get that next year. Now watch then. One more. Now, another story, which I'm not going to even deal with, I guess, today, is Joseph. Joseph would be the other person out the Bible that God did the same thing to. Had a dream. Joe had a dream. Joe had a dream. See, Joe had a dream that uh, everybody was going to bow down. The dream started out with him bowing down to everybody. That's how the dream started out. First, you're going to bow down to your brothers. They're going to put you in this hole. They're going to sell you. And when you get to uh, Pharaoh and them, you're going to bow some more. Yeah. Well, bow to the house. You're going to be head servant to bow. And then after you bow, and you could have maybe uh, took part of his house, and you could have been the man in there. All you had to do is yield to his wife because she wanted him. Y'all don't want to talk. So you understand that? So you, actually, he had the opportunity in the natural. Y'all know the story of Joseph. 
Okay, I, I'm, I'm working the story with Joseph. Now, that's another example. All he had to do is got deceived by himself and say, Potiphar not going to find out because you ain't going to tell him, baby. What? what? You, you ain't going to tell him, huh? And me and you going to have a thing going on. And then we'll be waiting for the next trip he's going to take you. Y'all don't know the story. So Joseph could have did all that, man. And would have been, and would, but Joseph, Joseph's stupid. His brothers done sold him. God ain't come to get him out the pit. God ain't save him on the journey going to a part of his house. Going to Pharaoh and them, that, 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 he was praying hard in the chariot when they were bringing him. And nothing happened. God, what are you doing? Then of Joe, look, I got another plan. I want to save the whole tribe, not just you. I want to save all them people when they're going to be starvation time. I'm speeding the story. I got a better plan than you, boy. We ain't just about you. We're going to take care of you for 15 years or more, going through all this in the prison and everything. And boy, you coming out. Joe, you coming out. Now, now rewind now. That ain't happened yet. But you coming out. And by the way, I'm going to send the butler and the baker down there, and they're going to vex you. Because they're going to come telling you about some dream. And Joe, you know. That's the reason I'm in here. Because I told a dream to my brothers and them, and they sold me. Oh, Lord. Man. I gave three different incidents in Scripture, and all them people turned out to be mighty, mighty men. Left a mark on uh, eternity. See? They didn't start, they finished. Some people stop, but they can't finish, see? They hold up right there. Huh? So they, all them boys finished. Every one of them boys finished. And you know Joseph finished. But Joseph finished more showing the example of what we supposed to be, like the Savior did. Because Joseph finished long-suffering. Huh? And Joseph finished, and he shouldn't have finished because after all that time, he tried to second guess God and tell God it's too long. I think it's time for me to get out of this prison. I'm going to close with that, see, because that's where most Christians are today. That you're going to tell God when it's time to do such and such. He almost blew it after all he went through. Uh, uh, just a little revelation that you see. Now, Joseph went through, and I think he spent about 13 years all together in prison from the time they put him in. Uh, a few years in Potiphar's house, then they put him in jail. Huh? Now, the amazing part about this story is every time he got in trouble, the scripture says, and God was with him. I've shared that many times. Most of y'all have not maybe heard me say that. Uh, you go to Scripture, right? Where they got ready to move him from, from Potiphar's house, and he went to prison. And then God says, I'm with you. Well, why don't you leave me alone? Could look like it's getting worse for me. Uh, y'all don't like to be real, see? You ain't play the old little pig woman game, pig, pig man game. That's really... In the natural, most people would have blew it right there because they, when God told them, I wish you were, where you were. You let these people do me any kind of way. Well, why you didn't stop uh, that old lying woman tongue? Cut her tongue out because she lied on me. I could go through all the scenarios in the natural. But this is not about being in the natural. We win. You're going to lose. Because in the natural, that's how you, because you're still trying to protect yourself. Still trying to protect. You don't protect nobody. God got a master plan going on. You lose. 
Come on, Elder. Genesis 39, 21. That's but the reference. Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Well, I got that. I don't want no sight. I don't want no favor from being in no prison. Well, I got to go in the prison in the first place. You telling me you would me will keep me out of that. I'm the only one thank you. The average person wouldn't have want to tell him, then, Lord, is that you? Is that you talking to me? It sounds like the devil talking about you with me, but I got to go, and I'm going to give you favor. In other words, you telling me I'm going to stay there because I'm going to give you favor in that. There you go again. That's part of God's character to bear fruit in the individual. Because God wants you to be able to get there and then represent him. Not represent yourself. So you need testimony of I set this up. I did this. That's what you need. All of us need that. Where pride won't get you. But pride don't get you because you're going to go there because you're always trying to protect yourself. Huh? Wow, boy, it's quiet in here. Now, we got to go because some people need to be free. Free people free other people. Amen. If you're still bound in yourself, you ain't going to be the free nobody because the prayer going to be always for you, always looking out for yourself, us for it no more. See, you can't see. So this real train going to move now. And if you don't get the information and understand that God is trying to build an army that will be able to understand the love for others so you won't say, won't do certain things because they're going to corrupt other people. And he's more concerned about other people than just you and us four and no more. He wants you to die. And everyone has got to die. Now, if you want to go on with the Lord, or the devil will have the more doors open and he bring curses. So you just live a, if there's any such thing as what I'm about to say, a miserable Christian life, so-called Christian life. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And once he stripped the joy out, you don't have the more strength. So now you got doors open for all kind of stuff coming in. In your mind, in the way you feel, in the way you think. That's where he's going to attack you. Every time. Every time. Now, but he bring a bag full of other stuff. Depression. Sickness. Huh? Mental illness. He bring all kind of other stuff he come walking in with. He got all kind of hacks he put on. Because of your uh, distrust in the master's plan for your life. Now, everybody got a different plan God has to play a role in completing his will. Everybody got a certain part of the task that you're supposed to perform. His gifts in you already where you can be able to. So that's what the devil come to disrupt. He want to disrupt that. Where you won't be able to flow in the way you should. I, I'll try to go further next time. Now, the praise that you're supposed to be coming from your heart, uh, you've seen it with Paul and Silas. Because they proved what was in their heart. Now, I, I'm trying to finish with Joseph right there because I got to close then Joseph didn't show that. When those men came in, we'll go to that story a moment. Joseph was still, he went back to himself. What has been done to me? I'm not, I didn't deserve to be treated this way. They're talking about God now. Because God was the one kept telling him every time things went on, I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay? Now, keep in mind, Look at God's grace and mercy. 
that God did with him. Because that was mercy. Because when he mentioned to these fellas, telling the whole story about how he got them, and God would not let the man even tell Pharaoh when he got up. I hope y'all know the story. Okay, he didn't tell him nothing for him because he was trying to get him to put in a word for me, put in a word for me. God wouldn't let him say nothing. God's so long-suffering, brother. Two years he didn't say nothing. By that time, Joseph said, say, well, I'm going to rot in prison. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I hope you understand that because two years passed, and that's why I want you to read. Two years passed, and the man didn't even say a word. Huh? In other words, God said, take two more since you can't learn. You can't learn, I run this. I got this. You don't have to worry about it. Now, now I, I guess we would say, well, that was hard for God to do that to him. God was setting precedent to show how he worked. And he had already said in Scripture, most of y'all know them, wait on the Lord's Scriptures. Say, so y'all want to talk to me? I say, Wow. Because you keep, you be singing it. Wait on the Lord. Well, wait. How long? And the Lord always say, not long. How long that is, Lord? Not long. I never, Lord said, wait on me. Your waiting going to be uh, shorter if you just trust I'm going to do it when it's time. You got to wait. You don't go around there telling me, okay, I have a date. And if you don't do it then, well, what you going to do then? I learned don't get God no date because what you going to do when the day comes? You got to wait some more. So wherever you want, whenever you get ready, Lord, you got it. You, you know what time and you know you, you have perfect timing. Go ahead and read that if I leave because I, I don't know. I might be making people mad with me now. Go, on, go ahead. Genesis 41.1. Uh -huh. And it came to pass at the end of two full years uh -huh. that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. Wait, wait. Two years it took till God give Pharaoh the dream, not you. I'm going to give Pharaoh, I gave Pharaoh the dream, and that man that's supposed to put on a word for you was right there. Timing. God always have time, and time is perfect. So you got to get out of his way. That's our surrender. So you got to surrender everything to God. Whatever you want to do, he got it. He got it. Just, and those that wait on him are going to see, the rest of the scripture say, you're going to see his glory. You're going to see his power. But when you get in the way, you're trying to run him. You're trying to tell him what time, when to do, when to go, how to do. Da, 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 da. Well, you ain't learned how to trust him yet. Because you got to come to a place where you totally commit that. You totally commit your life. Whatever you want, we're going to trust you, Lord. We ain't feeling it. We ain't going by the performance of it. Because I see people running themselves crazy. They're from this to that to this to that, trying to make God work. You, you just ain't in the right place yet. That's trusting. That's all. And I said... Just lay up there and sleep, neither. You know we don't do that. I didn't say that. But you get anxious. And it starts controlling. You start controlling it, trying to control it by the way you feel. What you're going to do. By the way you look. You can tell when most people are upset with God. Because they start looking all the joy I leave. Now, Elder, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'll give him that, and I got to go. So once you lose the confidence in God, that God run everything, and you have to interfere with it, then you lose the joy. And that means you don't have no strength. So that means you, you got some doors open and Satan swinging in like a sort of saloon with all kind of old feelings, all kind of old desires. There you go. Glory to God. Now, there's a show proof deliverance 
Because the Bible tells us we're supposed to walk in the Spirit. Not run, because you're going to turn the wrong way. He said, walk in the Spirit. So he wants to show you how to truly be led by the Spirit to walk in the Spirit. Because you got to be led by the Spirit to do that. Huh. Now, I got to close. That's enough for today. I've got that part in. Maybe next time I'll get the rest. All right. It's all depend how God sees you, what his purpose is for you. It has nothing to do with you, per se, the decision. It was already formed, David says, as in my mother's womb, it was set already. Abraham, Joseph, all the men of God and women of God, that it's already set. My job is to find it out now. Now, but faith cometh by hearing the word of God. So I went to those stories to show this is the way God operates. Now, if you don't believe the way God operates, you have your own plan, then you got to do that. But that's, the backing is on what is written already. So I encourage you to check out his word. Help me to understand, Lord, how you are. I, don't, I want to identify with you. Not what, what I feel, what I think. I want to identify with you. Now, I got legal rights now because I'm not making up something as I go and then think that's God. So, glory to God, that's all I could do. Then, pray for me. Next time, it's proven by how thankful you are for what you have right now. What you're doing right now. Right now. Right there, just there. You're thankful. You give thanks. Thank you, Lord. I could be sitting in church today, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for my help, my strength, Lord. Thank you, Lord, I have the right mind, Lord. I, I, I thank you, Lord, that you've given me a spirit of forgiveness, a spirit of to release people. And help me not to be judging according to me because you know the intents of all our hearts. You got that? Everybody hearts. He know everybody heart in here right now. What's in your heart? What, what's more important to you than anything in life? Huh? What, what is, is it? Is, is it that is, is Jesus and what he did to free me from sin more important than anything in my life? And that's what I have to pursue the rest of my life? Where I would have his favor, not my favor, but his favor. Is that more important to you? Now, I'm ending with that because everything else that you may do might look good today, might feel good, but if you have not sell it in your heart. So one day, hopefully, before you die, you would sell her. You're the most important. Your word is more important to me than anything. Help me, Lord. Help me to put to death put away everything else. I want to be there. Now, that's why I end. Because I can't make nobody do that. You got to say that yourself. And he's faithful. He will help you to be the man, to be the woman, to be the boy, the girl that you're supposed to be. But you communicate that. And you don't go telling him how you feel. You always connect to what he did before and who he really is. Because he has a track record. He identified with his track record. And if you can do that, then you can be able to get through whatever preparing that he have to do to get you ready to do his will. See, because he know the people you're going to meet later, and if you're still bent on the way you respond, then they're going to bring it at you. Because <laughs> you ain't dead. You got to die. I want to respond like Christ. I want to respond like God responds. Uh, 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 Brother Kevin, that's called fruit. 
That's fruit I'm talking about right now. So I got to close. You got the love, the long suffering, the patience. You got to have fruit. Now, a lot of Christians say they talk Christianity, but they don't have no fruit. Come on, stand. I could go on and on and on. Come on, stand with me. That's all I could give you today. I, I'm trying my best to help, and it's helping me by even studying it. But I'm, I'm trying that you could know that you have strength in you. You don't have to be overtaken. Now, the, the brothers and sisters have been looking at the different uh, generation curses, word curses, all that. And I want to, I'm going to polish that all up for you because you got open doors. If you can close them doors, you wouldn't have the problem. But it's up to you to close the door. You don't want to close the door. You keep doing the same thing. God keep testing you, and you go right back to the same thing over and over and over again. Now, I hope y'all pray during this time of teaching because open doors bring curses, sickness, mental issues, sudden death when we start going this way. I, I've been knowing about the curses, the deliverance, since before we left New Orleans. But there's time in that God does things to talk teaching on stuff. Now, because there's consequences come from when you take the knowledge and despise it. So I'm trying to warn some of y'all, if you don't yield to what's being said and you think that God just going to let it go, no, you got to be dealt with because you've heard the truth. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, man. Oh, man. Lord, no, I can't go there. No. You know, in Romans, Paul said, uh, the right way to deal with homosexuals, he says that because they didn't believe the truth, open door coming. If you despise the truth, then the open door going to be open now. And you'll cry like a baby, but you'll open the door. And you wouldn't close the door. Because what happens if you can't repent, and then repentance means not just today, but tomorrow, every day. Is that right? Romans 1 verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those. Uh, 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 uh. Right there. I want an easy Bible. That's what I heard. But do an easy Bible. Watch. Those people decided that they did not need to know anything about God. So God let their minds become spoiled. As a result, they do bad things that people ought not to do. Okay, wait, 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 wait. He said something about the truth there, if I'm not mistaken, in that passage. Okay? Those people didn't honor the truth of God's word. Verse 25, uh -huh. who changed uh -huh. the truth of God uh -huh. Go ahead. into a lie uh -huh. and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Easy Bible, right? Come on. They refused to believe the true things about God. Uh huh. Instead, they chose to believe lies. They worship things that. The lies come from within their self. How they feel, how they think. Now, what do you say? Watch. You say they, what? they worship things that God made, uh -huh. and they became servants of those things, but they refused to worship God Himself who made those things. Everyone should praise Him forever. Uh huh. Now, they, they, uh, King James Version, I, I got to get it right there. Right there. Come Who on. Change the truth of God uh -huh. into a lie. Uh huh. And that's the key. They change the truth of God because they believe how they feel, what they think, so they believe a lie. Now, you're not going to change what God's going to do because you believe in a lie. You can't continue to believe that. I can get away doing certain things, and God's not going to judge this. Uh-huh. So, 
Satan's going to bring sickness, mental issues, because you got a door open wide, because you believe a lie. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm perceiving God wrong. I'm not portraying who God really is, because that's what we're supposed to do. That's the way. you telling me God like that, where you are white? No, God not like that. God don't do that. That's sin. So you've opened the door now for God to have to deal with it now. Because Satan ain't going to quit. He's going to just keep pumping you. Pumping you up more and more with it. Until he destroy you. So I'm telling you, this is dangerous. Because all the devil is trying to do is wipe out true believers. You know what he do? Then people that don't know, don't understand, they say, if that's the way God is, I sure don't want, I don't see no different in you. You worse than me. Because <laughs> huh? I wouldn't do that. See, so that's his point. Getting the truth out, helping people understand what they need to do, that that stuff they holding from what their mama did them, and then now they're 30 years old, 40, they're still responding from it. They're still responding for something in the past that so they take it out on me, take it out on somebody else because they're still responding. Now, they don't want to know that's the truth. They don't want to know they got strongholds, stuff in their mind that been told them and done to them, or they never understood or believed that nobody really loved them so their life have been a performance to try to get people to love them, to like them. So they just keep doing that same thing. And they don't know the difference from nobody really can for them or not. Because they've been abused and rejected all their life. So God trying to show, I'm not like that. I don't do that. You can trust I love you. You can trust I care for you. And even though it might not feel like we're going in the right direction, I got you. I love you. Because I want you to be delivered. I don't want to put a Band-Aid on your bobo. It's festering. It's a fester, that wound been open so long. That's a long so you got to be able to be healed of it. Can't be, some people carrying a, a, a Gauze on, they've been, they, they dirty, they've been rapping so long. I'm going out of their heart now. Don't start with me, but nothing else the other day. Now, brother, come on. Do you, I'm talking about, do you understand that you need healing? If there's no healing, you will reject the love of God. Oh, Lord, help me. God was using Joseph to show his love to his Joseph them people. If you know the story, that was God showing, I'm a, I, got to, I got to put him in prison because if he come up premature, he going to miss the timing. I got to have him where Pharaoh have this dream and then he come up from prison and give the right interpretation. Everything had to be timed right. My brother, everything. Because if he came up two years earlier, Pharaoh didn't have the dream yet. Y'all not see. See? It had to be right timing, sister. Not premature baby. Nine pound bouncing baby boy. Had to, that you, you hear what I said? It had to be right on time. Just finishing the story. Everything had to been timed out. Those men had to come. In two years, mm -mm, too soon, Joe. Pharaoh got to have the dream. When he have the dream, then we gonna call for you, homie. We gonna call for you then. We don't want you coming before that. You gonna miss the timing. So everything planned. So then they're going to be seven years plenty, then seven years. Ah! It had to be time with the weather, <laughs> with the drought. 
<laughs> yeah, boy, that guy came for you. Oh, man. Everything had to be on time. Not how you feel what you think when it's supposed to. Wow, wow. Some of y'all might get that. Some of y'all might understand that. That's the way God is. You just don't know God. All his stories like that. He never too early and he's never late. That's how God operates. You know, it's never early and never late. Always right on time. Oh, man. You know, you said, what's wrong? He's an on time God. He's an on time God. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name, man. Something you just can't get it. Who are we dealing with? Are we dealing with a man? You're dealing with the Almighty that knows everything. Don't miss no details. Now, oh man, man, man. I'm excited that I serve a God like that. Then rest, man. You can rest. Rest yourself. Keep just keep in contact with him every day. Keep in touch. God says to keep in touch. I'm gonna let you know. I'm gonna let you know when it's time. Don't worry about it. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. You say I don't never want to quit. We have a glorified body when we get home, you know that? Ain't gonna never get tired. Ain't gonna need no nap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, 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 man. So I want y'all to lift your hand. Let me pray. That's the best thing I can do to close. Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Give us understanding, Lord, to be able to know who you are, how you operate, Master, that we won't be worrying or fearing, but we would find ourselves trusting you, Lord. God, that we could be able to bear fruit, because, God, we're a little impatient, so we need some fruit. We need some waiting to be able to become patient. We're asking you by your spirit. Whatever we need to be able to be more like your son, let us be able, God, to tap into you, Master, knowing that you love us, knowing that you care for us that way, Lord. Oh, God, that we can be able to use everything, God, that you seen before when we was in our mother's womb. That you had a place, you had a timing, you had got a gift, God, skill, Lord, that we can inherit from your spirit. To be able to do everything, to be the right person, God, for another person. To be able to minister in a correct way, Lord, effective way, God, to others. I thank you and I give you praise, God, because it all was settled on Calvary for us. We can always go back, God. The blood is good enough. Power your resurrection is good enough, Lord. Oh, well, God, the glorified body that Jesus came back with and walked on the face of this earth is good, you say. I thank you for it. Now, let us receive, God, your word, God. Many of your people stand here, and you know where they are. I'm going to ask you to take, God, something that perhaps we may have said, the word to help to penetrate their hearts, that they can sense how much you care for them, because this was the right time that they will found it in this place today. I thank you for it. I let it be done by your power. Help us to continue, God, to look into a little deeper, God, where we can totally surrender to you. And all the past and all the wounds and all the hurt, God, will be laid at the foot of the cross. And I thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, glory to his name. Glory to his name. As the prayer scene close, if there's any prayer, and anything that comes to mind that you want to pray about now, and help, and you want help, then we'll, we'll pray for you. I, I don't want to, if there's any, maybe healing, maybe something that's worrying you, that keep bringing the sickness, things you think you need to control, you need to run, and you need to let go. But come. And pray, I pray for you, some of the ministers, that you could be able to uh, ask God. And, and just to help 
pray. That's all, would you? That's all. But you got to do it yourself. But we'll just help pray with you that God can help you and strengthen you and let go whatever you think. Because remember, he's on time, God. This is the time to even talk about it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hope you enjoyed the service. We don't want to leave you just like that. We want to give you opportunity to know that really, nothing else really matters after it's all said and done. You have to be able to accept Jesus into your heart, into your mind, where it controls how you live. So I want to say these few words to you because that's all it takes that you would invite him into your heart, invite him into your life, that nothing else really matters and you are controlled by what his word says. So you need to accept him and then come back to his word and see how you should be living. Father, in the name of Jesus, repeat this after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, come into my heart. Help me to be able to not just say I'm a Christian, but I would be able to live the life. I thank you for sending your son to die for me. Now let it be done that that will transform my life in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you took the time to say the sinner's prayer with Bishop Monet, we would first like to welcome you into God's kingdom. And we would love to hear from you and to continue to pray for you. Just text the number that's on the screen and we will have one of our intercessors to reach out and minister to you and pray for you for any other needs you may have. Until next time, may God bless. For more information on how you can contact us, please write to us at Smoking for Jesus Ministries, 1804 FM 2342, Burnett, Texas 78611. Or you can visit us on our website. That's www.smokingforjesusministry.org.